Okay, welcome to the second talk. We have Morey Allen here, who will talk about paths into, into Debian, different ways of getting into Debian. And Morey is a long-term Debian contributor and currently one of the DebConf chairs. So enjoy his talk, Morey. Hi, so this is also meant to be a discussion, so I hope you can kind of wake up slightly um, and get ready to say some things as well. Not just on RSE either, maybe. <laughs> so first, before starting off, I'd actually be interested to hear from a couple of people, or a few people, if they can say how they originally came, started doing things in Debian, or why they, or I mean, how, if you're at DevConf, presumably you've had some contact with Debian. Um, I don't know, can I volunteer someone, or maybe like, uh, Ashish or Margo or someone else can say something if we have an audience mic. Um, so I started using Debian around 2001, 2002. And I started just as a user. Then I wanted to contribute more, but I didn't know how. So my first point of contribution was trying to uh, create good bug reports. And so trying to be good at that and starting doing some patches. And then I went to DevCon 4. And to me, that was like a turning point in my involvement in Debian. Putting faces into names and, I don't know, uh, knowing the people that I was speaking to on IRC, knowing how they reacted, the way they acted, it, it made me much more comfortable in the Debian community. and I. Very quickly after that, I started like maintaining packages and doing a lot of other stuff. Ashish was got his hand. Okay. Uh, so I also began using Debian around 2001, and then I uh, I started. I mean, I evangelized Debian a lot to my friends, um, and they were surprised when I seemed to know what every package did. When they were just running it just upgrade, they're like, "What does the block ID two do?" Uh, and um, I, around 2004 or so, decided I want to contribute more to free software, not just projects that I started, and uh, was tr trying to choose between contributing to Debian or Ubuntu, and chose Debian because it, uh, it was an older, more community-based distribution. Anything I did in Debian would flow into Ubuntu, and it has these goals of free software, and it's not written anywhere, but basically of being as excellent and perfect as possible. Uh, and so I found some random tools that had ITPs, uh, RFPs, requests for packages that I could package. And those were pretty easy. And I found a sponsor by shaking the mentors list, I guess. And then I met uh, Mako Hill, who became a friend of mine through a mutual friend. And then uh, I started doing a lot more in Debian. I started maintaining the Alpine mail reader and then uh, became a DDD, and somewhere along this, while in the while not yet a DDD, went to a DebConf, and that also really made me much more excited about the project. So I guess I'll emphasize that's a like seven-year gap from 01 to 08, with the peak, with the activity really going up a lot, starting five or six years in. Maybe someone we can force someone hiding at the back of the room. To... <laughs> I'm sure someone has must have got to Debian somehow. <laughs> Um, well, I remember the times when I was using this proprietary operating system and, well, I knew it quite well, but I didn't like it so much, so I read on mostly Usenet that there's this Linux thingy and um, I got curious and, and reading Usenet postings, it looked like the cool guys are all using Debian, so I looked into <laughs> Debian too. <laughs> Well, and at some point I wanted to know how this is created. I started to read mailing lists. I tried to learn packaging. And well, and then some people helped me along the way, like sponsoring packages, inviting me to join teams. And since that time, I really enjoy being part of this social project called Debian, which creates an operating system. 
So, yeah, maybe to, just to be interested in who's here, how many people in the room think that they, well, how many people feel that they are currently contributing to Debian? I guess probably most people here. Or, and who, is, who didn't put their hands up in the previous question? <laughs> okay. And out of people who are contributing, um, let's say, how many people have been contributing up to two years? And then maybe kind of between two and four years? Um, four and eight years? And uh, eight to 16 years? <laughs> and anyone in the room with more than 16 years? Probably they're in the bar. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can hear later on some more of people's own versions of how they've got into Debian. To, but I'll just present a few things to say how the processes have changed a bit over time. Um, so really the, well, if we had someone like BDEL here, if you haven't heard about um, from some, find BDEL in the bar later, and you can ask him how he got involved in Debian, say. Pretty much in the early days of Debian, it just meant you sent an email saying, hi, I want to upload packages, and you got the FTP password, and that was it. Um, some processes started to develop over time later on, which kind of culminated in the famous NM, or new maintainer process as it was at the time, um, which itself then evolved over time and became a kind of feared by people as a big bureaucratic um, stage with, the, again, the, not necessarily the truth, but at least the perception from people was they needed to kind of write essays on the philosophy of free software be some kind of kernel hacker, um, license guru, lawyer, everything else. Um, and also it just, again, the perception rather than necessarily the reality was that this took a long time to go through. In practice, at any stage, when, when we've, when, every time we've had the NM process, there have always been occasional people who would pass it in kind of one evening of a, a few emails backwards and forwards. But m for most people, I mean for myself, when I went through NM, you get this, I got this huge list of questions which just seemed intimidating and maybe I took a few weeks or a month or two to really get around to finding time to apply to it properly. And then the whole process then stretched out over a few months, which is pretty typical. Much more recently, um, as a formal process for getting into Debian again, people have created the um, so-called DM status, which is in a way, I mean, some people will disagree with me for saying this, but in a way is meant to be a kind of um, sticking plaster for the fact that NM was seen as difficult or slow. This is to say that just much more easily, if you were doing some work in Debian already, um, you could just apply for this status and be able to upload your packages without needing a sponsor anymore. Now, both of those are kind of to give people some formal status, but again, unlike when Debian started off, to be able to get any kind of formal status, you already need to be doing some work which is really a kind of chicken and egg problem for a lot of people, that people don't feel entitled necessarily to do the work if they haven't got some status, but they can't get the status until they start. Um, so our kind of m motto for this in Debian has always just been that there's no problem, people should come along and they should just start working on something. But if you're really new to the project and don't yet have a good social link, don't yet understand how things work, that can be quite difficult. So yeah, the traditional way to get involved in Debian as to be recognized as some kind of contributor has been by doing packages. And traditionally, that in the last, again, since the kind of time we had the new maintainer process, um, the way this has generally worked is to tell, to suggest, if someone comes along seeming interested in working on Debian, then you say, yeah, yeah, just adopt some package. Um, you can just look at the um, WNPP, which is a, a list of packages that have been orphaned or the, the current maintainer is looking for a replacement maybe, um, you can look through that and find some package that you could take. Um, a problem there though is that actually pretty often packages are being or have, have been orphaned or are being orphaned for some reason. Um, sometimes, and often the, the current maintainer really knows, for example, the package is basically dead, the dead upstream maybe, there's not so much interest, but because they invested a lot of time in it over the years, it's hard for them just to say, we should kill this package. 
So they say, well, let's find some new victim to take this on. Um, but it, doesn't, it can be then dispiriting if you are the, the, the lucky winner of the new package. Um, that you then find out that you've got this package which no one's fixing bugs upstream. Maybe it's becoming incompatible with other parts of the system. It's kind of out of date or problematic. So you see a lot of people who adopt packages and then maybe a f six months later or a year later, they haven't really changed much and they kind of find it difficult to, to move on from that. Um, an alternative approach, which again is, is a good approach in some ways if you're interested in packaging, is just to find some software that isn't packaged yet and package it. But unfortunately, Debian's quite big now. So probably most of the software that a lot of people really want to use and that has a clear license and that is possible to package without going mad has already been packaged. Um, so again, I mean, even, even a lot of software that maybe isn't packaged and seems useful, nowadays often it will be a web app. And the upstreams for web apps extremely rarely are interested in the idea of having them packaged. They think they should just make some huge tarball you download which overwrites half your system and installs a few languages you hadn't heard of and plus PHP and MySQL and whatever else. Um, so again, well, if you're really an advanced packager, you can try to kind of disentangle that all and make something clean. It's really a nightmare if this is your first experience of Debian packaging. So a kind of what people might be recommended to do more recently within packaging would be, say, to join a packaging team. But again, even in that, there's kind of trouble because if you're not in the team yet and if you're not making contributions yet and you come, say you turn up, at, even if you find where to speak to the current members of the team, maybe on some IRC channel, if you turn up and say, oh, hi, I've never done any Debian work yet, I don't know anything about packages, but I want to help, if you're lucky, they'll say, oh, great, we'll mentor you. But in a lot of teams, there's likely to be a kind of lack of interest because they don't really have the time to mentor someone or they're worried that you'll just break something. Um, it varies a lot between different teams, but again, it's, there's no way easily to find out which teams will be receptive necessarily if you're just a new person who turns up. The other issue, I mean, I've been, so up to now, I was in, in the examples, I was talking about packaging, which has always been traditionally how we got people to be recognized contributors of Debian. But in the last few years, there's been much more recognition within the project that, yes, packaging is central to Debian, but it's not the only way that people should be working on it. And that we, we've always, in fact, had a lot, huge proportion of people who contributed to Debian who've done their contributions through other methods. So one that has happened over the years often and has been um, ex very successful at getting new people involved in the project has been translations. Now, this is kind of seen as a, su as a success story because uh, Christian uh, had, took it on himself to push this a lot for Debian installer and then through that to try and build up language translation teams for other areas of packaging. Um, but, and, and then did active things like we, we've always had the exciting maps of the world showing coverage for DI, so there's a kind of game element or you can get your country, your language higher up the list by helping out it and so on. But in the, in the, even in translations, in the more general area, if you look at just translations of the upstream software itself, which is actually what users see most of the time, then we don't have any kind of um, anyone leading the same kind of effort. So again, if someone comes to Debian as a translator, we can direct them to maybe help with DI or to help with um, DebConf translations, other, other things like this. But there's still, it's kind of hard for someone who's just starting off. Maybe what they were interested in is actually having some, some piece of software they use a lot in their language or improving it. And again, e even where there are existing translators, they, like the packaging people, can be a bit territorial, that they have their own ideas about how you should translate technical terms into the language, for example. So if you come along as someone else with a different idea, then it can be hard to, to kind of get yourself in there and be seen as a, a useful contributor and to get really started off. In translations, at least, we've had some kind of structure. If you look at another example of a, of a non-packaging way of contributing to Debian, then we have, we, in many areas of Debian, we would like some kind of design or artwork. But really, at the moment, there's no kind of social infrastructure for that whatsoever. 
If you're a member of Debian already, or if you are known to people who are, if you're already part of the community, then maybe you can produce something, people will pick it up and use it for the website or use it for DebConf t-shirts, whatever it is. But if you come along, again, as an outside person, we've had quite a few people over the years who come along and they say, for example, um, I've sat in my bedroom for the last six months and here's a redesign of the Debian website. Now, they've probably put a lot of work into that and they have something that we could actually be using. But when they come with, when they come where there's no so social infrastructure and they just come and try and dump something like that and say, well, can you use it? Unfortunately, the answer is normally people it doesn't work technically, and people just don't like it. They would have preferred something else, and so on. So again, this is an example of a, an area which is not packaging, where really there is no no way at the moment to easily draw people in. And even though we would actually um, like people to work on this a lot more, so again, the unsolicited work in this kind of area is often just really gets thrown away. At least if you do a package, even if it's for some software that no one uses, your package will go into the archive and be there until it gets orphaned sometime later. Um, if you do some artwork or a redesign of some website and you, you shove it onto a list, then often there's, it's just chucked away without anything at all. So again, I mean, there's many other areas at the moment in Debian where we would like much more help, but we just have at the moment no way really to get people in. We kind of, we occasionally are lucky because we find them through people who are doing packaging, for example. They, make, they happen to make some contact with someone locally in a, in a place or whatever. But it seems to me that we could be doing a lot more to try to actively encourage people in these kind of areas or have some, I mean, this, um, again, as has been discussed in, during this DevConf, for example, some kind of welcoming for people who turn up. Um, but again, even if you have some, a kind of front desk approach, you still need somewhere to direct them. You can't have a couple of people who are going to know exactly what to do with all these people in every different area like this. Um, and again, these are really the areas where we actually need the most help in a way. Um, in packaging, of course we want new people, but we kind of do that pretty well at the moment. Whereas artwork, we, we're okay maybe, um, translations, we're, we're good in some parts, less good in some others. Something like fundraising, we are desperately short of people to work on, and the same for press. And in both of these areas, most of the people who are currently working are people who came for some other reason to Debian first. Whereas actually, there's a, lot of, there's a huge number of people out there who have real expertise in these areas, and we could be learning from if we could somehow make contact and draw them into Debian. So, if you're a new person, and say, imagine that you are out there and you find out about Debian and you want to start working. We do have some documentation online, um, but as it is kind of normal for Debian, we have various slightly contradictory things. Actually, yeah, I mean, um, we've got stuff on the wiki too, but even on the main website, we have a few things like this that you might bump into. Um, I need to. I'm trying to drag a window across. I, ah, yeah. Okay. So you might find this page, if you look for, your, you go online and you start searching the how do I work in Debian, then you might bump into this one. It's kind of quite a nice page. It's got some useful information, but um, this is on the slash intro slash help on, on debian.org, which sounds a kind of sensible place for someone to start. Um, but if you see, it starts off, yeah, you can do some, you can report bugs, you could help with support, internationalization, BTS, uh, wiki, you could, you could start a new Debian port yourself. I mean, maybe, maybe that will happen. Um, yeah, different architectures, do security bugs, you can donate. But again, there's, there's nothing here about the kind, what, what might be described as the kind of non-technical contributions. Um, and also, it's just a kind of big block of text with a few links out, but no, again, there's, there's a lack of the kind of social aspect of where do you, what do you actually do with this. If you're a Someone who likes to sit in your bedroom and hack, maybe that's fine. You can go and read 20 different documents and come out with some great idea. But a lot of people, when they turn up, they're expecting to 
to speak to someone and say, well, how, what, what should I do? Or is it really a good idea for me to work on this thing? Um, let's, let's do another one of these. Uh, so this is on slash devel slash join. So yeah, how to join Debian. It sound, sounds a good idea too. Um, so what do we have here? We, yeah, we say you should read the DFSG. Okay. Uh, read lots of mailing lists. Uh, yep, you can read, you can look for orphan packages. That's the kind of big contribute, that's under the contributing he heading here. Basically look for orphan packages or um, pick up something that's half dead already. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a kind of couple of bits that have been tacked on as a kind of afterthought paragraph that actually you could also do documentation or website um, or translation. Um, and then it's pointed out that actually you don't need to join Debian anyway, which is, is kind of true, but maybe if you were looking to join Debian, then it's, it could be a bit off-putting to say, actually, you don't need to bother. <laughs> um, and again, there's a... F uh, yeah, so this then describes exactly, you can become a DM, which is allowed to upload packages. You can become a DD, and yeah, this should take so many months and so on. So I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all accurate and useful information, but it's not necessarily very welcoming for someone who just turns up. Um, and a, a third one from Debian, so again, you might, if you follow the links from the other pages, or you might find this directly from Google, um, then you come here, which again tells you the first big point on the page about becoming a new member is to say you don't need to be a new member to do anything, go away. <laughs> um, but, but we're open, it's okay. Um, then you can, yeah, you can sponsor, do bugs, do packaging teams, but it, in this case, there's not even much mention of the, the kind of non-technical things. Is there a question or a point? I think you're being... Is it on? Yes. Yeah. I think you're being a bit harsh on the wording. I don't think they're trying to send people away. I think they're trying to reassure people that they can start working straight away. With, with, like, you don't have to be a DD already, so we're, we're not a closed group who's only open to Debian developers, we, you can get in without, without being... Yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm being a bit sarcastic yeah. that maybe the, that's the in original intention. But yeah, I just think you're trying to put a negative meaning on it, which, which the wording isn't trying to convey. I'll micro-agree with Ian, even though I wasn't originally going to talk about that. But yes, uh, I think this wording does a good job of being inviting, although if we really believe that, then we should go test it with some random technical people. And uh, that leads me to my major thought here, which is to the extent that we think this documentation works for people, then we should be able to find, any of us should be able to find five fairly technical friends to show up to this page and then quiz them afterwards and say, here are the things that we think you should have learned from this page. Did you learn those things? Uh, and actually, you know, you do the opposite way. Here are the questions, and you find out their answers, and you run a yep. diff against the known good answers. Uh, and um, so user testing this stuff is my major suggestion here so far. The other suggestion I have is that we don't know. Uh, it, I can think of some semi-radical things we could do to improve our uh, how we describe these things and where we put them. My major suggestion for that would be to put on the front page as you scroll down, here's the way to contribute of the month. Yeah. But if we do that, we won't know if it's working unless we set up the measuring infrastructure. So we should do that. Uh, hello? Okay. Um, so for developing, there is, is really good uh, documentation. But did you click on the writing documentation link for the, uh, on the uh, uh, developer's corner? There's nothing what suggests that um, how to join the, the documentation theme. So, and I, I, I suspect that's a little bit for the non-technical areas as well, that the um, how to join in the sub areas is not very well documented and yeah. you can see it. If I just browse the page and I saw nothing about, hmm, where should I start? Man page one, page, new maintenance guide, but nothing. So here you can start, look for that. We need to have to make that some tr translation. So maybe at this point we could just compare quickly what some other um, distributions, apparently there do exist other Linux distributions or other free software distributions, whatever we want to call So let's look at what do Fedora do here. Uh, is this Fedora? I meant to make the font a bit larger. Um, so yeah, if you go to the f Join Fedora page, then I don't know, I mean, I think Although, even before going into all what the information is, maybe you can, it, for me, this feels a bit more of a kind of a, 
friendly, welcoming page. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you have chat, join the lists, read planet, get free stuff. And then if you carry on down, we've got um, maybe you're one of these kind of people. You could be a content writer, a designer, a people person, an OS developer, a translator, or a web developer, as examples. Um, so you see here the, the kind of packaging thing is not shoved up as the kind of main thing with others and afterthought, but it's a lot of different types of people who can contribute in different ways. Um, and this, I don't know, again, just some, it's obviously it's different for different people, but to me the page here seems maybe to have more of a feeling that they really want people to come and work in these kind of ways. Um, just another couple of examples. So let's... Linux Mint, I, apparently it's some kind of newfangled Linux thing. Um, so they have a get involved page here. This is a kind of bit different because they start off with, you can do sponsoring and things like this, but then you come down, join the community, and in fact, so they have joined the community without even saying you need to make a technical contribution. You can make a forum account and start chatting to people and that is already you are joining the community by doing that. You can help others debug and so on. Um, then they've got new ideas, um, translation, artwork, code. So again, there's a, in, maybe I think I preferred the Fedora one, but I mean, again, it's a, a set of different ways you can contribute um, with examples that might apply to a, a broad range of people. Um, and as a f final example here, um, I have, again, some distribution I heard of sometime. Uh, so, yeah, again, happy, happy smiling people picture, although yeah, there are some women in there, not so many. Um, and not necessarily a broad racial distribution, whatever, but anyway. Um, and they have, yeah, so this says, whether you're experienced or getting started, you can join the, you can join the community, um, you can do it locally, you can chat online, you can help people, then some happy quotations from you know, you know, um, and then again, different ways to contribute, developers, documentation, design, translations, quality. I mean, in this case, actually, they've kind of kept the Debian terminology a bit that developers are the technical people and the rest are something else, but um, still, at least they're, they've kind of got a broad range of things there. Um, and then again, also giving just links back to things like their planet blog, website, and so on. So one possibility of one way to help people may, have, may be just basically to try and make the website information a bit more consistent and a bit more friendly to people. I think this would be a, a great thing if some people who have time were happy to work on. Of course, that's, I think I'm not trying to say that people wouldn't like it to be friendly or better at the moment, whatever, it's just, again, obviously the lack of time, so it's maybe some people in this room have some interest in working on that. I just, I'm trying, not, I'm trying to leave some time for the discussion, but I've got a few other slides to come through, so another thing that seems to me would be helpful from this kind, if we have this kind of website, um, which again, people have agreed for years is a good idea, and people have done different versions in the wiki or elsewhere, uh, different, different initiatives at different times, there's some kind of more central list of even within each of these areas, tasks that you can easily get started on. But again, maybe ideally with the kind of people that you should contact for them, not just to say, this is some bit of code that's needed, but this work on this area is needed, talk to this person or this list or so on. Um, and in fact, this could also help existing Debian contributors um, who are looking for something new to work on. Um, again, there's been a lot of discussion in this DebConf, um, as in the previous period recently about different ways that we can do kind of mentoring within the project, different ways we can have temporary internships for people, whether that's in Debian overall or people who are already in Debian, even within specific teams. Um, a few teams have already done this to try, that you can try joining the team for a few months and see how you get on. Um, and again, this is also something that's useful for existing contributors. Um, again, another thing that people generally agree is a good idea um, it's not, I don't think this is controversial, is to say that to have more contribution, more communication from teams of what they're up to. Um, again, this helps within the project. It helps people who are trying, who are actively trying to um, get into the project. I mean, I was actually, um, again, I, um, I was pointed out to me, this also helps people who just want to lurk to start with. The more you have kind of good information clearly there, whether it's on lists or even on 
planet, even on IRC, but as long as it's on some channel that people can kind of find. A lot of the people who do want, certainly a lot of people who want to work in the technical areas, maybe they want to just lurk on a channel for a few months first and see what happens. Um, but they can only, people who are not yet in the community can only do that if they can find out how to do it. Um, not if it, everything happens on some IRC channel that's hidden from the channel list and not advertised anywhere, so on. Um, it seems a lot of people who get, a lot of, if you ask people how they got into Debian, for most people there was some pre-existing personal link. Although I think it's very important that we could have some better information on a website and so on, that's not normally sufficient to really draw people into a community. Most people, they have someone they knew in their town or someone they knew from university, whatever it was, who originally introduced them to Debian. Um, so one, quite, one thing that's been brought up, and actually Zach was quite interested in the idea, um, although not much has really happened on it in the last couple of years, but again, due to lack of time from people, is the idea of pushing some more kind of activity of local Debian organizations. At, what we have successfully done is to create bureaucratic Debian organizations in many countries, which can hold money and things like this. Um, there's been, it's much more variable between different areas, whether they actually have any kind of social meeting or any events or things like this. And often what happens in practice is that you have a few Debian developers in a city and they may occasionally meet for drinks themselves, but they don't really advertise that as a Debian event. They're just meeting with their friends, which obviously is fair enough. But it does seem that there is some space for us to more actively push these, some of these things as local groups or whatever. Um, obviously, again, in many places, in most of the relevant places, there are already different technical meetings, including things like Linux user groups. But certainly nowadays, maybe 10 years ago, there was much more overlap. In, in my ex personal experience, there was more overlap then between the kind of develop Debian developer style or interest and things like Linux user groups. Now a lot of them have moved much more to actually be Linux user groups, um, by, uh, as the name suggests, and have things like talks about how to use OpenOffice or this kind of stuff that isn't typically so interesting to people who are um, pushing to actually make some serious free software contribution. It's a slightly different angle. So again, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say that we should f fork off or split away from any groups we are part of already. But in many places, it, where you, certainly in, in bigger cities around the world, it may make sense to have some kind of advertised Debian meeting, even if in practice it's just a couple of DDs who meet for a drink. There's not really any harm to advertise that and see if anyone else comes along who wants to get involved. Um, so I've, well, we've, we've still got a few minutes. So I was, I've listed here a few topics people might want to make some comment about or tell me why it's a really stupid idea or whatever. Um, so things like local groups, again, if anyone wants this, if anyone has specific ideas about the website or would like to um, volunteer to be help, to help work on that, um, anyone who wants to, who thinks, or, I mean, again, there are some kind of task lists already, but it really needs some people to more actively curate them to try to find, seek out things that are easy topics to people to join or um, find points of contact and so on. Um, again, other ways, that, if anyone has ideas of other ways that we can find people for what, the, what are normally kind of described as the non-technical tasks, as the, all the tasks that aren't packaging in general, actually, um, and other, other ideas that people have. So who wants to start? Uh, uh, I, can, yeah, I can say something. Uh, um, I think that... Yeah, the ideas were great about how to simplify documentation. I think we should do that. But it does not solve the core problem you mentioned in the beginning, that many people might want to have social interactions in some way. And I'm not sure um, if it's possible to do that online. Maybe we can try to do that. But I really like the local groups idea. But the problem with local groups is kind of you need uh, quite a high density so that it works because people don't want to travel many hours for these meetings. But it's something I'm considering to experiment with in Switzerland. I think it could work <coughs> like rotating between cities yeah. every second month or something. And yeah, maybe we'll see how it goes. Hi, 
Um, actually, as I was one of two, or one and a half things, I think you missed what you, uh, we could start with. And that was what was I was doing myself is I just started with some QA things, which are obvious to do, which are described as websites, and we just need somebody to have time. I mean, they are low hanging fruits, they are higher hanging fruits, they are very high hanging fruits, so one could go up step by step. Um, in the past, already have seen once a non German developer who contributed quite many patches um, to the, uh, as the bug reports. In fact, they were of so high quality that then I, um, that I um, uh, yeah, recommended him to start the AM process without a package, and he went through. So, yes, you could do with technical work without packages through the AM process. And that's something I think we sh should recommend to more people. And yes, uh, it also helps, helps them very much because we don't get yet another thing which needs to be cared of, but somebody has to take care of the things where we actually really need help right now. Yeah. Okay, there's one question from IRC about if there's a possibility or even a policy about providing infrastructure like uh, mailing lists to local groups. Uh, list masters or Ali or admins want to comment? <laughs> well, I could of co I could comment even if not being a list master, yeah. but yes, um, there are cases where this is, is being done, um, so I assume it will be done for, for other groups as well. Uh, in Brazil, what we did was we, we created an Eliot project for yeah. Debian Brazil, and then we create local lists inside that project on Eliot. So we don't need really, really to ask list masters to create those lists. Uh, so I'm, uh, along these lines, I'm very involved in Python user groups, uh, and uh, every year at the yearly Python conference in the U.S., there's a birds of a feather session with people who run local user groups, and uh, more than once I've seen the following conversation. Uh, somebody says, oh yeah, I was trying to get a Python user group started in my random town in Ohio, and I made a mailing list, and I tried to advertise it, and nobody came. Uh, but what I found most remarkable was that once the person sitting next to that person said, uh, actually, I live in the same town and started a, mail, a Python user group right at the same time, but I started mine on meetup.com, and then we were flooded with attendees, and we've had a great time, and we eventually merged with the one sitting next to me. And this is not to be an overwhelming endorsement of meetup in particular, but just to say that the tasks of not just creating the group, but getting the word out about the group are separate, and both of them are hard, and the getting the word out is the harder part. No, I think again, I mean, it's if you have a couple of Debian people in the same city already, the easiest way is just to make them, them meet socially as it is, but advertise it. Then there's no, they don't need to feel bad if they don't have 100 people turn up at the meeting. I mean, as even, if, even if it's purely a social thing, that still gives a much easier so social access for new people to come along and have a chat. Uh, anyone here at DevConf, have you met someone at DevConf who lives in the same country as you, who you did not know they lived in the same country as you until you met them at DevConf? A few hands? I mean, I met someone at the dinner, yeah, I met someone at the dinner who met, met someone across the table who both lived in Paris, they just didn't know. Uh, which is to say that getting the word out is still really hard. Yeah. Uh, I organized a uh, bug squishing party in Shanghai and uh, there was a lot of people who showed up who had never made anything in Debian, and it was great, but I was not expecting that. And uh, uh, I think it, it would have been even better if I could have found some tasks for them, which was up to their level. And uh, I think that that's sh sh maybe some others could, could have the same experience. So that's why I, I wanted to share. Yeah, I've also seen this where bug squatting parties have basically turned into kind of mentoring or introductory events because the people who turned up were people who wanted to get involved in Debian rather than people who were already ready to start squashing RC bugs, um, which is, is fine, but again, maybe it's, we shouldn't just focus on this kind of bug squashing, even though that's more directly, more immediately useful for Debian in the short term, um, that really if you get people involved in this way, that will in the long term have a bigger benefit. Yeah, so you mentioned quite a lot of uh, very interesting ideas about improving uh, all those uh, ways to get into Debian. Uh, if you had to choose, well, you also, you also mentioned that uh, lots of people lack time. Uh, if you had to choose uh, just 
the three main ideas that you think you should write, do right now, uh, well, as soon as possible? It, it's tricky because some of the ideas I think would be most useful also require more time. So I think having, if you had a kind of welcoming people plus a curated task list and points of contact, then those two already would make a huge difference. But keeping it, finding this list of tasks that are accessible for people coming in at different levels is a huge amount of work itself. And ob as obviously, in many cases, you might even have tasks where it's, it's quicker for someone just to fix it themselves than to really document it. But having those kind of tasks available documented is also is a useful thing. Um, and again, I think the local groups would make a, if we imagine we could flick a switch and have local Debian groups in every major city, it would be a huge difference. But again, you can't just make that happen overnight. So. Shish again. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the, so it seems like we got a bunch of critical mass for a Debian welcoming team yesterday, and the core notion behind that, behind that is taking people who have already shown up to the project somehow, made a wiki edit, or probably initially just gotten all the way through to uploading a sponsored package, and welcoming them. I think we are going to end up over the next six months with some kind of bug curation because we'll, uh, we'll, want, to we'll want that when communicating with people. Um, so if anyone else is interested in joining this welcoming team to greet new people, then please find me. I'm Ashish afterwards. The microphone's not working over there, I think. No, no, not video. Uh, again, I really want to stress out the point of that the other ways of getting into Debian, like contributing to doc or art, aren't very well documented. Because um, someone said to me today, okay, file a bug against the new maintainer's guide. Even I, who, are, who is um, used to packages, I just thought, okay, where should I go? Then, hmm, yeah, there's no, nothing on the web, web page. Until I thought, wait, there's a package. And that's for non-technical people, even mu much more yeah. counterintuitive. And this is the part, the basic steps are already done, but we have to refine them. Yeah, well, many Debian teams are not even well documented for people within the teams at the moment. Um, there are already, there's quite a few teams where but people within them have me, trouble as, to know what's happening. Uh, when I started with, with IT, documentation was a way to get into because I read the documentation, tried to understand it, yeah. tried to use it, and there I could, I could uh, go into it. And this is for some semi technical people easier. And, yeah. And who in the room would be interested in principle in participating in a Debian local group in their city or their region? Yeah, so I think it's possible to make these things happen. Yeah. Do we have a, a we're, we're almost coming out of time. Does anyone else have a couple, another point or two? There's any, any, again, any of the people at the back, hiding at the back of the room have a willing to voice their opinion? No, all sleeping? I just wanted to mention my very small experience. Uh, last year, I organized a best question part in Dublin, um, just because it was the freeze. And I saw there was no other Debian events. And then I realized there was no Debian community. And a lot of people show up. And well, I had to leave the country anyway, so I couldn't continue much with that. But there is kind of a, a, a local Debian group now that hopefully will grow with time. But it was amazing to see that the worst interest, just yeah. somebody needed to do the first step and gather the people. Uh, it was the same in Barcelona, that we have, well, we have, uh, we use the Debian user Catalan for doing social things. Well, it's a an user and, and we, we can, a lot of people is asking for technical reasons, but it, it's only used to, to prepare, like we did a party, we did a workshop, and people is looking for doing more things. So it's what Tincho has said. One person has to do something and then... 
Yeah, I think yeah. we're Thanks. pretty much out of time, but Ashir wants to say something quickly. Okay, so Ashir, some last short comment, but... <laughs> yeah. This will be very short if you guys make it short. So uh, it seems like we have a lot of great user grouping energy, but we don't have anybody organizing the effort of making sure Debian local user groups happen. So what we need is two people who are willing to be co-meta organizers of Debian local user, local user groups to keep track of those so we don't have the same event next year at DevConf so we can say that that's gotten better. So who's interested in uh, getting in touch with local user groups and making sure that our wiki documentation about local user groups is up to date? I'm happy to help you with it. Yeah. I'm also willing to help on this, but again, I travel a lot, so it's hard for me to constantly have time on it. So it would be very nice if one or two people, maybe who, even people who aren't yet feeling that they're contributing a lot to Debian, this is a great way to get started in itself. Cool. Uh, we'll start with you, and we'll talk more afterwards. So thanks to Mare for this great session, and I hope in the next year we will see many local user groups throughout the world and in a through Debian spirit, they can grow from the bottom up and it does not need coordination from the top. So don't wait for the coordinators to form your local user group. Thanks. Thank you.